G'day guys, it's your old mate Uncle Nico reporting on a sunny winter's day here in Melbourne. And there's a new sleep apnea implant that's just been approved by the FDA. It's called Genio by Nixoa. And it's another one of these hypoglossal nerve stimulation implants. Similar to Inspire, not quite the same. Um, I'm not gonna go through the differences in this video. If you wanna watch a video on that, click the link above and you can listen to old mate Vic Via, who's an expert in the field. But I do wanna discuss the Nixoa Dream clinical trial results which is what they use for the basis of that FDA approval. Now, this implant likely costs tens of thousands of dollars, maybe upwards of 50,000. And for that amount of coin, you'd expect pretty decent results, like good therapeutic outcomes. And I just don't think that's the case. I don't think the value proposition adds up with this implant or the Inspire implant for that matter. Now, let's discuss the primary outcomes. And they set the success bar very, very, very low. All right, and what they were trying to achieve is this. They wanted a 50% reduction in the apnea hypopnea index, which is how many respiratory disturbances a patient experiences on average per hour per night. And they wanted to try and get that AHI number less than 20. That was criteria number one. And here's the result. Out of 115 patients, 73, or 63.5% tick that box, which means four out of 10 patients missed the mark. They couldn't even get their AHI under 20. And this is using a very generous 4% oxygen desaturation criteria. Basically what that means is this, when you're going through and you're counting up all the respiratory disturbances, the oxygen desaturation has to dip down to 4%. Now, if they had have changed that to 3%, these numbers would be very different, trust me. All right, so instead of four out of 10 patients, it would have been higher. It's only 1% I know. However, we've got over a million nights of blood oxygen data on Sleep HQ, and that's what we do. We count up the 4%, we count up the 3%, and it's probably 25, 30, 35% more when you're using that 3% instead of the 4%. It's, it's much more sensitive with the AHI. All right, so companies that are using the 4% criteria, they're doing so because they wanna show their results are better. Put it that way. So that's number one. Now the second primary outcome was they wanted an improvement in the oxygen desaturation index. So they just want a 25% improvement in the blood oxygen drops. And the results, 71.3% or 82 out of 115 patients tick that box. So three out of 10 couldn't even get a 25% improvement, 25% in their oxygen desaturation index. And that's the 4% again. If they use the 3%, like I said before, much more sensitive with the 3%. Like those patients using CPAP, and I know not everyone can use CPAP, guys. It's not about CPAP's better than this, whatever. Those patients using CPAP, right, they've got their AHI down to less than two. They've got an ODI of like less than one, most of them. Like I said, we've got all this information in Sleep HQ. These guys have set the bar so damn low. 20 AHI, 25% improvement in the ODI. Come on, what's the point? What's the point of going through all this effort, having the surgery, all the risks? Let's talk about the risks here. So out of 115 patients, 8.7%, 10 subjects, had serious adverse events, including three explants. They had to take the implant out of three of the patients. Now, the way these implants work is they're designed to stop your tongue from falling back and collapsing in on your airway and blocking your airway. That's what they do. That nerve stimulates your tongue to shoot forward as you're breathing. Now, I can't help but think, why don't these patients just sleep on their stomach? You know, old mate Dick Veer just released a pillow with a great big hole in the middle of it. Why aren't these patients sleeping forward so that the tongue falls forward? Why do they need to have a $50,000 operation 
with all this risk, very little reward to solve this. You know, is, is that what we're doing these days? Like Vic Veer, the man himself, you know, this is, he makes money from doing this surgery and these implants. He dropped an absolute bombshell the other day. So what I did was I looked at the last few years of our sleep studies and we did an awful lot here. We do 6,044 different sleep studies in the last few years. But when you look at the numbers a little bit more detail, 60.3% of people were completely cured when they slept on their side. Their snoring levels came down. Their AHI came down to less than five. The AHI is the number of times that you stop breathing every hour on average. It's a marker of severity of sleep apnea. It's nowhere near as sort of inconvenient or, or difficult as having an operation, for example, or an implant for the rest of your life, CPAP, mandibular advancement devices. All those things have sort of annoyances, inconveniences related to it. Sleeping on your side relatively in terms of risk to you is very, very low. For a 60.3% improvement to the point where you're cured is a remarkable improvement and something I just didn't realize so much. So I thought to myself, why on earth aren't we all talking about this? Because there's too much money to be made? It's just nuts. It's just absolutely nuts and it's so true. Now, I don't know the exact numbers, but I'd imagine there's over 60,000 patients sleeping with an Inspire implant. And what I'd like to know is where the bloody hell are they? Where's all the success stories? Yeah, if you're that exhausted, that desperate that you go for this invasive procedure, Inspire or this one, whatever it is, and you go through all the effort, the surgery, all the sleep studies, the eight weeks before activation and then gradually increasing the voltage and just the whole thing, surely there would be plenty, at least hundreds of people sharing their success stories with the world. Hey, this is so good, guys. Look, look at this, look at my sleep, look at my oxygen levels, blah, 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 blah. Where are they? They're nowhere to be found. Do a search on TikTok, do a search on Instagram, do a search anywhere, do a search on Facebook. And you know what you're gonna find? You're gonna find dedicated groups with thousands of members talking about the device failures. Now, I'm sure there are success stories. I'm not saying that there's not people out there that go, yeah, you know what, this is actually pretty good. I sleep better, I'm not snoring. I'm sure, it's, I'm sure they're there. But I can almost guarantee I, someone could get you there without the implant. I just know it, all right? That's, these are my opinions, guys. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people in the comments hating on it. I know it's gonna rub a lot of people up the wrong way. I just don't think the value proposition of these implants is worth it and they'll be thousands of people that do agree with me on this one. But obviously it is your life, you are free to choose to do whatever you want. I'd sleep face down. Have a good day, cheers.